Hello and welcome everyone inside the Update Studio for our live recap of the top stories on the women's side of 18.4. I'm Tommy Marquez, joined at the desk by Annie Sakamoto. And Annie, Dave Castro gave us a heavy barbell, but once again, he made us earn it. And it almost felt like he gave us an extra heavy barbell because I'll tell you that 205 after Diane did not feel the same way as it did in warm up. I'm definitely feeling that 315 today from <laughs> the men's weight, that's for sure. But on top of that, he gave us a new handstand push up standard, and this really put people's virtuosity to the test. Definitely. And, um, you know, I was looking forward to handstand push ups, obviously, with my build. Um, but it was funny, I kicked up and um, I was barely clearing the line, and I thought, uh oh, I'm one of those dis disadvantaged poor fellas that has a, a long, an extra long forearm and an extra short humerus, um, and I'm, I'm the one that's going to be stung by this standard. And then I kicked back down and I realized if I had brought my hands in a little bit, and I marked that spot, um, that my heels had about two inches of clearance. So it took me a minute to figure out what to do, but once I brought my hands in, I was fine. So attention to detail and quality movement gave you an advantage. Funny huh. how that works, huh? Funny how that works. <laughs> but another new thing that we've got for you guys is a, a fan poll that we're using in this show today. We want you guys to tell us who you think is going to win 18.5. We've got Annie Thor's daughter, Cash and David's daughter, and Sarah Sigmund's daughter throwing down this Thursday. If you want to vote, you can leave a comment in the Facebook comment section of this show right now. Use hashtag Annie, hashtag Katrin, or Hashtag Sarah to cast your vote. Definitely we'll be checking in on the results of that poll throughout the rest of the show. We're going to jump into the top performers in 18.4 on the women's side and uh, take a look that, at the leaderboard. And one of those women was the winner, Annie Thor's daughter. A time of 534. Absolutely smashed this workout. Another top games athlete, Carol Ann Reason Tebow, finished in second with a time of 558. A bunch of newcomers falling in their wake, but down at the bottom you see the champ Catherine David's daughter as well as Cassidy Lance McWhorter also having some strong performances as well. And Annie, just when we think Annie T is maybe starting to decline, she has a performance like this that really reminds us she's still at the top. This is such a huge win for Annie Thor's daughter. Obviously she's not built for the handstand push-ups, although she is and always has been quite confident on her hands, but it's that heavy deadlift. You know, the, the deadlift is what took Annie T out just a few years ago. She hurt her back. Um, and so for her to win on a heavy deadlift workout, fantastic. And then the girl that finished right behind her, Carol Ann Reese and Tebow, I don't know why. I just maybe didn't consider her to be one of the best in a workout like this, but clearly she proved my thinking wrong at least. Right. She's kind of had middle of the pack performances on both the heavy deadlifts at the games and handstand walking at the games. And it's funny, there was a lot of people um, in this workout that are really good deadlifters or really good on their hands. You put the two together and they didn't have great performances. And then you take somebody like Carol Ann Reese and Tebow, who's kind of middle of the pack at both of these things. And then she shines, getting a sub six time on this workout. And it just shows that, you know, at that elite level, you don't have to be fantastic at any one thing. You just have to be really good at everything. And she certainly proved that with how she rose to the occasion here. Another athlete you didn't see in the top 10, but another strong performance as well, Cara Saunders. Given the two movements, really impressive that she's in the top 30. Definitely. Very similar to Annie Thor's daughter. Um, this workout, you know, and a couple years ago at 2014, Cara suffered on the push-pull event, which had strict handstand push-ups, and then also on the handstand walking. And it actually ended up being why she pulled out of the 2014 games, a games that we all had her slated to win. So for her, again, to keep herself in the top two worldwide um, after a workout that involved a lot of handstand walking and being uh, and handstand push-ups awesome just shows where she's at this year already yeah. I mean she did so well at the games and already showing some improvement in 2018 thus far quick little update for you guys about the video uh, about the poll that we just introduced and right now it looks like it's a tie between Annie and Sarah in terms of percentage on who you guys think is going to win they both got 39 percent apiece with Catherine sitting just behind them in 22%. We'll give you guys some updates on that as the show goes along. But now we're gonna take a look at the overall leaderboard after four weeks for the women. And uh, we see a little flip-flopping at the top. And week, after week three, Caro Saunders was in first, Cassie Lance in second. They've switched spots. Cassie takes the overall lead by about 12 points. Carolyn Prevost continues her strong performance in the open in third. And the win in 18.4 moves NET up into the top five. She sits in fourth. 
as well. And uh, Cassie Lance McWhorter, after not making the games, has really continued to improve with each stage of the competition. Just like you said, she didn't make the games um, a couple years ago. And then last year, won the Atlantic Regional, beating out Emily Bridgers, finished 12th at the games. We always kind of wonder, you know, was that just a good year for somebody? Um, but we can see here her being in first place after five tests of fitness, four weeks down, that she really has worked on some weaknesses and she's running on some momentum right now. Yeah, putting the rest of the Atlantic women on notice heading towards the final week of the Open. Another athlete in the top ten that you may not have heard of, Rachel Garibay. Strong performance thus far, sitting in seventh. But Annie, this may be the end of the line for her individual competition this year. This is so hard to think about, right? She's been a regional level athlete, but nobody that we've ever really focused on. Here she is in seventh place again after four weeks. And right now on paper, she's slated to go team with the Arosti uh, Texas Super Team, Travis Williams, Sheila Barden. Obviously, it would be it would be great. And she would get some games experience, I'm guessing, on a team, assuming that they would qualify. Um, but it reminds us of Jamie Green in 2016 when she won the Open and then went team. And we all wanted to see her perform. Yep. Who knows, maybe this will be her lead in, Rachel Garibald's lead in to being an individual next year. Yeah, Jamie Green's footsteps, certainly not some bad ones to follow in. And uh, we're going to take a look at some athletes who maybe have some ground to make up going into the final week. Here are your bubble athletes on the women's side. Christina Seeley, the only athlete on this list to actually go in the wrong direction. She moved outside of the top five in Canada West. Well, remember, they only have five guaranteed spots to the West Regional. Kayla Stefano and Haley Adams Two teenage athletes that are find themselves on the bubble, Danny Horan, Casey Campbell, both improved. They're inside the qualification line, but still have some work to do if they want to make sure they get a guaranteed spot to regionals. And Annie Haley Adams and Kayla Stefano, even though being on this list, given their age, it's certainly impressive feat. Definitely, and actually Haley Adams competed last year as a 16-year-old at regionals. Um, but I must admit, even if these girls both qualify for regionals, I really want to see them go head-to-head -head in the age division. They, Kayla Stefano has won it the last two years, the first year in the 14 to 15-year-olds, last year as a 16 to 17-year-old. This is both of their last year in that division. I would love to see one final matchup between these ladies. Everyone loves a trilogy, right? Yep. So. Regionals or not, it will certainly be exciting to see how that plays out between those two talented young athletes. And uh, taking a look at the top overall performers after four weeks in other divisions, here are your best in class. We mentioned Kayla Stefano. She's leading in the girls' 16 to 17 division. Then a pair of CrossFit Games champs, Samantha Briggs leading the 35 to 39, and master champ Cheryl Brost holding down the Masters women 45 to 49 division. And then Patty Faya in the 60 plus holding on to her lead that she had after three weeks last week as well. And two athletes in 18.4 that didn't just do well for Masters division, but well overall worldwide was Becca Voigt and Helen Harding. Yeah, I'm so impressed with both of these ladies, especially as Masters athletes. I know Helen Harding quite well, and I have to say that if there was not already a workout named Helen, then this would be the workout that I would name Helen. Uh, Helen Harding is known to love heavy deadlifts specifically and being on her hands. So to get a combination of handstand push-ups, handstand walking, and heavy deadlifts, that was her jam. And then Rebecca Voigt, you know, there's nothing I would say that Rebecca Voigt is necessarily fantastic at other than being really good at everything. And that's why we, we love Rebecca Voigt is there's just seems to be nothing that she can't do. Seriously, she's, she, she's someone you want on your apocalypse team because she's probably hard to kill and somehow will just Definitely. find a way to keep surviving on the way she has in her CrossFit Games career. We've got one workout left in the 2018 Open, at least as far as we know. We have an 18.5 announcement coming to you guys this Thursday from Reykjavik, Iceland at CrossFit Reykjavik. We have three of Iceland's finest, three daughters thrown down, Katrin David's daughter, Annie Thor's daughter, and Sarah Sigmund's daughter. That will all go down at 5 p.m. Pacific, so be sure to tune in to see what we're going to close out the 2018 Open with. And speaking of these three women, here is an update as far as who you think is going to win the 18.5 announcement. And we've seen a slight shift now. Sarah has a 1% lead over Annie. Sarah's got 40% of the votes. Annie in second with 39%. And then Katrin Davis' daughter in third with 21%. So maybe, maybe Katrin has some work to do. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting poll results thus far. But after the announcement on Thursday, we've got another special treat coming to you guys on Friday. The latest CrossFit Games documentary drops Friday at midnight. You guys will sure have to check that out. And if you haven't already, 
Here's a look at the trailer from the new doc titled The Redeemed and the Dominant. What our athletes are doing, everyone thinks is impossible. That you can be that fast, that you can be that strong. That you can have that many different skills. You can walk on your hands, clear an obstacle course. They also train fitness more than anyone else in the world. Tia Toomey has been second overall at the CrossFit Games the last two years. And she has filled one of the most important holes in her game. It's not a bar, it's not a movement, but it's what's between the ears. Five feet remains. Toomey is not going to break. Oh, no. And she just got a no rip. I hope you play your cards right. I hope you are in the best shape of your life. I want a good race. I want to feel good about this win. And this crowd is going insane! There's no pacing, there's no gaming. Get the work done. This is going to be an absolute grenade on the point stand. Do you think there are steroids in our sport? Yeah, I can. Definitely. Are there athletes who are essentially cycling off so they can test clean at the games? Possibly. The scenario that I'm competing against someone that's a contender at the games, like I know they're doping. You're not willing to put in that work, you're not willing to put in those hours, and get the f out of here. Something is amiss here, and it could have major implications. They are neck and neck at the line. The most dominant performance of all time. Oh my goodness, what a finish. I've probably seen that a dozen times, and every time I still get goosebumps. That is fantastic. We, got, we actually had a special screening uh, in Santa Cruz last week. You guys are not going to want to miss this new doc coming out to you guys. A quick update and a reminder on how to vote in our poll. We only got a few minutes left. Uh, if you want to cast your vote, you can do so in the Facebook comment section of this show. Use either hashtag Annie, hashtag Katrin, or hashtag Sarah to give your vote on who you think is going to win the 18.5 announcement. Tomorrow, we have another live show coming to you guys, this time recapping the top men's stories from 18.4. And we're actually joined now by none other than Patrick Sherwood, who's looking jacked in his polo there. He's going to give you guys a little preview on what to expect tomorrow. Thank you, Tommy, for such a warm and honest welcome. I can't believe, get out there and vote, everybody. I can't believe people aren't believing in Katrin. We got a two-time champ. I mean, who knows? But we have a great men's show coming up for you tomorrow. We'll get into 18.4 and some of the men that absolutely crushed it. Nobody was better than Austin Maliolo. Tip of the cap to him. He did insane. Then we'll kind of zoom out, look at the Open thus far after four weeks of competition, and overall, who are the men near the top of the leaderboard? Some of those names truly surprised me. I know they were beasts, but fittest in the world after four weeks, doing absolutely incredible. Then, of course, it wouldn't be the Open if we didn't have some bubble athletes that need to dig deep and have an amazing week five to get themselves to regionals. Lastly, we'll chat teenagers. We'll chat masters. We'll have another poll for you guys to vote on tomorrow. We'll have some witty intellectual banter, of course. All of that and more tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific time. So please come on and join us. Thanks, Pat. Well, our polls are actually closed now. We have the final results for you guys on who you think is going to win in the 18.5 announcement. And Katra made up a little bit of ground, but it's still Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Sarah Sigmund's daughter is your winner of the poll with 40%. Katra bumped up about 5% to 26 And just behind that is Annie and 35% as well. And it looks like there's still got a few votes coming in. But right now, Sarah is your winner. Are you I surprised, Annie? No, I actually really like it. She is the only of the three daughters that has not stood on top of the podium. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, this kind of will be its own little podium, right? The three daughters in Iceland. Um, so I like that Sarah's on top. Yeah, who doesn't like a little underdog there, yeah. you know? Uh, thank you guys for, for casting your vote. We're going to have another poll for you guys as well tomorrow, so be sure to tune in. And uh, 
let your vote be heard. Uh, that's going to do it for us today. For Annie Sakamoto, I'm Tommy Marquez. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys tomorrow with our live recap of the top stories for the men's side in 18.4.